Deeper audience. Love line may contain sexually oriented content. 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 Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love line. Coast to coast. Hey, 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 everybody. Love line. We're back doing the show live. When I say we, I mean me and Dr. Bruce. Now, don't panic, kiddies. Dr. Drew will be back. He'll be back uh, Sunday night. He's still on his uh, tour of the Panama Canal, as oh, far as I know. Drew for filling in for me. He filled in for you? or well, I've had know? anal sex and I've passed out. Oh, <laughs> Bruce, it's, it's too early for those kind of revelations. Uh, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Bruce is a board-certified physician. He uh, also is an addiction medicine specialist, right, uh, Dr. Bruce? That's right. And uh, Anne knows uh, emergency medicine and um, is an expert with the laser. And yeah. A lot of people have questions about the laser. They want their tattoos removed. They want their scars removed. They want their stretch marks removed. They want their wrinkles removed. Maybe they have um, some skin problem. Maybe there's a pock mark or something on their face or an acne scar. You can do this, right, Bruce? Yes. Apollo Laser Medical, West Hollywood. And I forget the phone number. <laughs> Okay, but but let's open that up tonight because that is a a, a field of expertise for acne, you. Acne, acne scar. Right, yeah. I did mention a lot of that. great stuff. Yeah. And uh, people do have those questions, and and this laser will work on uh, such things as stretch marks and and scarring and that sort of stuff. Right, it really does. No one understands completely why, but and what cares? about what about something like discoloration, like a, a birthmark? Birthmarks very effective. Uh, really. Women that have the hyperpigmentation after pregnancy, pregnancy, it's in a mass configuration under the eyes especially. Right. It's really about the best treatment for that. A lot of the lightening creams women will find uh, they do not work. Okay. And hair removal. Yeah, yeah. The, you could, that you on could my use neck. Little, yeah, your neck, other places you might benefit. The, uh, the point is, is uh, Bruce is an expert with this laser. I've seen this retard tote this thing <laughs> halfway across town. In the back of his pickup truck to work yeah. on everybody. And almost acoustic Christmas, you, uh, after having a beer or two, agreed to let me laser your scar. And then. Yeah, I got a scar on the bridge of my nose. And sobriety won't let me do that. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll get drunk again around you. Don't worry. Uh -huh. Doctor, uh, as I said, Dr. Drew will be back in here on uh, Sunday. Dr. Bruce came walking into the studio just, I'd say, about four minutes ago and uh, had blood all over his hands. I mean, dipped in blood, not not speckled with blood, but as 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 if he was uh, reaching to the bottom of a blood bucket. Thank you for the coffee, Doctor Bruce. And uh, I thought it was his blood, but it turned out it was not his blood. Whose blood was that? Well, it was the poor the poor bloke that was speeding on the freeway ahead of me. It was a light rain. Uh, and, yeah, it was uh, a, probably a little more than a light rain. Yeah, and uh, coming into East LA, where it. Just past the 710 where the freeway turns and then straightens out. He sort of took off hydroplaning into the divider. And what was he driving? It was a, a small Toyota pickup. And uh, what happened to him? Well, he hit the divider in the center. He sort of went straight you into You saw this whole oh, thing yeah. happen? Oh, yeah. It was about 100 feet ahead of me. Really? And then he hit it going. He must have been going 80 and then bounced almost perpendicularly across, spinning around and... Uh, on, you know, I, if it's paramedics there and stuff, I don't bother them. They're great at doing their business, but I was the first one on site. So the guy was, you know, the motor was revving and there was smoke coming out. So I shut the engine. And, Jesus. Yeah, he was... Uh, well, where were you on the freeway, by the way? What do you mean? Where were... Hand me the cream is what I'm pointing at, oh. jackass. But <laughs> where I'm trying... I, I, you know, I thought to myself, here, 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 let me give you my line of... Let me give my thinking. I got a cup of fresh coffee that Dr. Bruce's lovely wife brewed for me. He has a quart of cream on the other side of the table. He's in the middle of the story. And I know there's no way I'm going to get that cream into this coffee without interrupting a story. But I think it's worth a try. So I think if I just point at the cream in the middle of the conversation, he might tactfully reach over and hand it to me. But no such thing. Listen, jackass. When you're pointing in that happen. direction, you're usually pointing at the monitor, right? I'm pointing at the, at the cream I'm a bucket. Pavlov's dog when it comes to that. Okay. So, so, so this where is, is the car on the freeway? He's uh, on the right lane. So he's in he traffic. He bounced from the le yeah. Well, yeah. He so, went from the left into the slow lane. Yeah. Then all the, everybody stopped. And right. There was a lot of traffic. So then I I stopped about fifty feet ahead of him and ran back and uh, shut the engine and stuck my hand in his mouth. His was was he mouth. wearing a seatbelt? Well, there's no telling what he was wearing. The, the inside of the car. It was 
pretty much totaled and crunched. And Did it look couldn't like, get him had, out. Had he made contact with the windshield? Oh, yes. Yeah, windshield was the windshield was broken and the airbags had both deployed. Oh, he had airbags. Yeah, and he had a hole in his nose and he had So he was still mess. with the airbags, he was a bloody mess. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was Jesus. So the the blood is coming from where? His mouth, nose. He punctured his upper upper nose and <clears throat> so I was just trying to keep his neck stable. He was in a sit upright sitting position. His neck stable and keep his tongue was out. Was he back lucid? Did he No, no, no. He was in shock. Yeah. He yeah. didn't know where he was, kind of <laughs> He thing? was unconscious. Oh, he was? Yeah. So his, you know, the, my goal is just not to move his neck and keep his airway open. A lot of, a lot of people, they, they asphyxiate on their own tongue or their blood, their secretions. So. Right. So he didn't have a gag reflex, so I just kept my, tried to keep his tongue to the forward of his mouth with my finger. Which he, he didn't have a gag reflex because he was unconscious? If your level of consciousness decreases, you get to the point where you don't have a gag reflex, you're not protecting your airway, and that's when you need to be intubated and have a tube put down. And then if you have a lot of trauma to the front of your face like that, the next thing I would have had to do was if he couldn't breathe because of trauma to the front of the face, nose, mouth, then you have to put a hole in his neck. You had to do that merge, emergency trach. Which I was not Not looking forward to. to. So you had your hands down this guy's throat? Well, no, I, was, I checked him, and then I... Just pulled his tongue forward and sat there, and my nine one one was busy. Everybody's trying to call nine one one was busy. Right, right, right. Because and I'm of, thinking, if I'm late, Adam Carolla is never going to believe the story. <laughs> because whenever I'm late, no, no, like for I'll, basketball, I get reamed. I'll tell you what's smart, though. You keep that packet of ketchup <laughs> in your ashtray, your truck, and just smear it all over your hands before you come in. It's always a good story, yeah. and, and we can never question you on that. All right, so you, you kept the guy alive. I, I doubt I kept him. Alive. I, I don't know. I don't know. That sounds that sounds pretty heroic to me. Uh, my last patient at my last rave didn't live. That was, oh really? Yeah. Killed killed the youngster. I did mouth to mouth. For, wait a second. He was forty six years old. Oh G Jesus! Guys dropping drinking an GBH and, and, uh, and dropping X. Look, he, Grandpa deserves to die at the rave if he's doing that. But <laughs> you waited there until did the paramedics show oh, up? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Paramedics showed up. You stayed with the guy until they got stabilized there. him. Yeah. Nice work, All right, Doctor Bruce, hero, hero. Hero and American. So I've had respect. anal sex and I passed out a couple times. <laughs> Gay American hero, Dr. Bruce. Larry? Yeah. You're 19. Yeah. What's up? Um, I got a problem, obviously. Um, this chick that I've known since I've been like seven, eight years old, and there's always been this thing like between us, you know, but we've always just kind of liked that at other people in this whole deal. And about... A year, year and a half ago, I just kind of broke out that I just like straight up said, you know, listen, I love you. And she told me the same thing. And I was like, you know, listen, <laughs> I actually really love you. And, you know, and it's just been, you know, it's going cool. And we've always like, you know, just been talking and just seeing what would happen. And yeah. she's not interested in you. <sighs> I guess not, dude, because yeah. my friend came down from New Jersey. And uh, so. Um, now we're all chilling together in this whole deal, and I'm living in Florida, obviously. Oh, she gets together with your friend? Um, if she has, she's just like trying to do try to do it without me noticing. Yeah. But she is all up on him, and it's freaking really pissing me off. Yeah. And I've just all right. And it uh, this is like the first time I've ever been in love, dude. And <laughs> uh, dude, I don't know what to do, man. It's I know. Cause but I love look, her more than life itself, you know. And it's I know. For freeing, sorry. All right, just just calm down there, Larry. Larry. You know, it's just I don't know what to do. Dude. No, I, un it's, I understand. It's an emotional, turbulent time. Very okay. So he's hooked in somebody that it's obviously never going to work. With yeah, him, he's so been he's, into yeah. her. You've known her for what ten years? Yeah, and uh, I've always been interested in her. Always. All right. Here's the thing. I don't know a human being who hasn't gone through this. Right. And sometimes it's women, and other times it's guys. Yeah. And it's a unrequited love, and it's the worst thing in the world. But it's like it's like uh, being circumcised. It's a, there's some sort of rite of passage for a lot of guys. You just have to get through it. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about. It. Now, here's what you got to do. You're gonna hurt. Your your job is to get through it without any, yeah. without you killing yourself, without you destroying her car, yeah. with without you beating getting beat up by her big brother, without getting arrested, without punching out some car windows. That's your job. Not not to get through it without hurting, because that, that's an automatic. Yeah. But to get through it without just screwing up your life permanently, which can happen. 
And it's a growth thing. You learn a lot about yourself. Every guy goes through that at least once real bad. Yeah. yeah. And if you stick with it, then the chances are then you've got some intimacy issues, and there's probably a party that doesn't want intimacy that seeks out these kind of situations to avoid, just avoid having a relationship that works. Yeah. All right. So, Larry, here's what you got to do. Every time you start freaking out, you got to understand that every single male over the age of 25 has gone through this. And there was another girl who had another name who was the most important girl on the planet. And now she's married to somebody and has five kids and we give a rat's ass. Everybody. Me, Drew, Bruce was into dudes. <laughs> but even Bruce, had he been into girls, would have been into this. And I know you feel special and I know it feels like you're the only one this ever happened to. And I know it feels like this chick is the most important one in the world. But no. No. Don't Everybody's talk. done it. And I don't know why it has to feel so unique. Because? I mean, I know why it has to feel so new, unique. It's you, but I don't know why you, people can't get outside themselves just a little bit and understand this is going to be looked at and laughed on one day. I mean, you're going to be married. You're going to have kids. She's going to be married, and you'll never know her. But especially as a teenager, and this guy's a late teen, and a lot of American teens don't fully get out of the adolescent mindset, adolescents feel like they are on stage and they're the only human being alive. And that's very normal for adolescents. And uh, growing out of that's one of the important things. Just don't go join the Taliban. Kylie? Kylie. Kyle. Oh, Kyle. Sorry. You're too sweet. Is that how they spell Kyle? I guess so. I said Kyle. Yeah. I guess you spell it that way. How? Uh, K Y L E. Yeah, Kyle. All right. Yeah. All right. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. What's up there, Kyle? Um. Well, I'm 17, and I've been in a few relationships. I've had like a lot of physicalness to them. Yeah. And I've been noticing a lot. Also, I know Adam, you'll, you'll probably like this, but I like I like to watch a lot of adult films. Mm-hmm. Hold on, let me write this down. <laughs> Likes to watch. Do you have any yeah. recommendations for Adam specifically? Um, tender Loving Care. Tender, I, I, I actually tried to buy a, a uh, porno movie today. It, uh, well, you just tried. get them off cable or something? No, no. I went into a, a store to try to buy a, a porno movie, and uh, it didn't work out. It didn't work out good for me. Why not? The, the, two problems. A, there was a chick working behind the counter, a young chick. Which is no good. Embarrassed you? Yeah, it's a, it's a little weird. Yeah. I, I don't I don't like chicks behind the counter. And then number two, they were they were playing K Rock, the uh, the station we're on out here felt, in Los Angeles. Felt like was, you're being watched. Was going through the speaker <laughs> system, and I'm hearing the um, K Rock and this chick, and I thought, uh, no, I don't want to deal with this. Amazing. Plus, they didn't, and they, like the, the big jug section was like as long as my arm, too. It was no like good. a sensitivity I thing. On. I didn't know you were that sensitive. There wasn't a good movie either, but. <laughs> well, I don't mind so much. I figure 50 year old guys go in there all the time into the spank booth, so. We'll yeah. Buying a porn. Yeah, that's a good. That, you, you should think that way. You're right. All right, <laughs> yeah, so anyway, what's your question? I've, um, I've kind of got the notion, and I've heard this around, and I, I think it's pretty true that if you watch too much, you get more desensitized towards sex. And since I'm so young, I've been kind of worried about that because I've had girlfriends in the past where I don't really want to push to have sex and stuff. I just push for a lot of kinky things. Okay, absolutely. Now, here's, here's the issue. Sex is obviously a normal part of life. And it also can become something you use to stimulate your dopamine system. The same thing as using a drug, alcohol, Uh, or certain people have compulsive behaviors. And that's where you get into this thing about becoming desensitized and needing more and more stimulation to get the same feeling. So there's the track you could be on of sex for stimulation and sex outside of a committed relationship and love versus sex in a normal relationship, healthy relationship where it's tied to intimacy. So it sounds like you're on the track of non-intimacy sex for the excitement and you can get into real trouble with that. So it's not a moral judgment about your, your watching pornography, but at your age, uh, the questions I'd ask you are about addiction history in your family, any kind of traumatic events emotionally in your life earlier on. Do you, do you have any addiction, Kyle? Um, I don't have any addictions personally. Do history, you father, mother? Uh, actually, not even there. It best I can think about was my uncle died from alcoholism, and so did my grandpa. Very significant. But, I, you know, I'm not trying... I'm just saying that... 
And that is very significant. Yeah, that no, it is. Relative is. Uh, it is. And the the things he's describing would be of concern. So uh, I'd also want to know if he'd had any kind of, you know, what his family life was like, what kind of relationships, how early he had sex, was he exposed yeah. to this stuff at home when he was very young. Hey, you know, kids uh, under teen years getting exposed to this, that is a form of sexual abuse. And the brain is, more and more what we're finding is that, Things you're exposed to uh, at a very young age can affect yeah. you significantly later on. Thank God uh, I, all I had was a goddamn black and white TV and uh, parents that were way too cheap for cable. So if uh, watching too much uh, Let's Rap on Channel 9... You might have been a community forum-based shows like that is bad for your brain, that I'm in bad shape. But let, let me tell you about this appointment. I, uh, I, try, I, I ordered my first uh, porno movie over the Internet. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm retarded. I can't do anything with a computer. Uh -huh. But I just decided once in a while, here's what I do. About every four months, I, I say to myself, you know what? You're nothing wrong with you. You're not an idiot. You're not a retard. You can do stuff that other people do. Now, just go do it if you want. You want to get on the Internet and get yourself something on eBay or something? You can do that. Yeah. See, it doesn't exist in my world. Yeah. I, I've, I've labeled that stuff for other people. I know. You've asked me to get stuff on the eBay Right, for right. Yeah. But I, once in a while, I go, listen, you're of average intelligence. You got some money. You got a credit card. You got a computer. You're on, you're on the Internet. Why don't you just go be a human being and do what other people do? Why not? Well, that's what I do. Then I try. Then an hour and 45 minutes later, when I can't figure out how to fill out the, uh, the on-screen thing, I walk away crying and shake my head saying, you're an, you're an idiot. Don't ever do this again. Well, I ordered myself the first. It's the first thing I've ever bought over the Internet, porn movie. Mm. This was two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Two long, lonely have you got any weeks yet? ago. No, I have not. I have been, but I've run to the mailbox like a retarded kid on Christmas every day, <laughs> just looking, just just waiting. I, I run and I'm like, where is it? And with all these holidays, it's been screwing me up. Like, and I actually said to my neighbor, I haven't even had a conversation with her in a year. I said, did they drop? Did they deliver the mail? They, they do it on New Year's Eve. I, I know they don't do it on New Year's Day, but did the mail come today? I'm frantically searching the mailbox. Now, I did this whole thing, and they sent me, and after two weeks, I started to get a little suspicious, but they sent me an email saying, we have confirmed your order. Uh -huh. Here's your receipt. Mm. It will be shipped out tomorrow. Two weeks of me like a maniac. I did this on the 15th, running to the mailbox like a retard on Christmas. I finally called them today, and they said, Oh, yeah, yeah, we got you on the computer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, your credit card didn't go through. Oh. I was like, <laughs> really? And they're like, yeah, you, you didn't want to. How about a little email saying the, saying the credit card didn't go through? Yeah, we didn't do that. So you checked uh, the just, email. Just run, just, yep, no email, no nothing. Uh. Just credit card didn't go through. Running like a retard to the uh, mailbox, so. So you're sort of in porno withdrawal here. Yeah, I'm in porno. I'm really having a hard time. And and I said, uh, so then I got this screwed. Now, today is Wednesday, but it feels like Monday to me, or at least Sunday or Monday. So I say, uh, well, what can we do about this? And they go, two-day. We'll, uh, we'll, FedEx, we'll FedEx it. We'll do the two-day delivery. I said, oh, that's great. And they go, it'll be there Monday. And I go, oh, my two, two God. days, two days, th Monday. That's like two weeks away, it's isn't it? It's probably San Fernando Valley, too. No, no, it's in like Florida. Everything bad is in Florida. All Wait. porno comes out of Florida. All terrorists learn to fly planes <laughs> in Florida. Everything that goes wrong goes wrong in Florida. It all starts in Florida. You could, you could trace anything bad back to Florida. But anyway, it, two days. So you could probably you know, look Monday. off your balcony and watch them film in a porno where uh, you live. All right. That, that's not quite the same. Gina? Uh, yeah, me? Yeah, you're 19? Yes, I am. What's How up? are you? I'm, I'm a little frustrated because I've been waiting for two weeks for my porno and it hasn't, <laughs> they declined my credit card, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. Actually, I had a question for Dr. Bruce. Hi. I have, um, hi. I, am um, about six months ago, I got a piercing. Those uh -huh. piercings that they get at the top of the ear, you know, that everyone right. has nowadays. And, um... A little bump formed there at first, and it was really small, and I didn't think anything of it. But it gradually got bigger and bigger and bigger. So um, I finally went to the doctor, and he said it was a keloid. And now it's pretty big. It's like if you were to take a marble and just glue it to the back of your ear. That's what it looks like. Right. No, it's not that big. Yeah, they get huge. Yeah, it is. So what did your doctor tell you? 
Well, he said to go to a Plastic. ear, nose, and throat specialist. Yeah. And um, I have an appointment, but I was just wondering if um, how would they remove that with a laser or? No, um, no, no, no. No, yeah. they got to use a uh, rusty letter opener at this point. <laughs> you can't use a laser to get rid of a marble size thing, can you, Bruce? Well, on the ear, I mean, I wouldn't attempt it. It's but filled with something, isn't it? No, no, no. It's keloid is an ex exuberant uh, scar for it. It's a type of scar. It's genetically determined. It's very... All right, hold on. You ever seen a keloid scar as big as a marble? Yeah. Oh, no, bigger. you haven't. I've seen How them. How dare you? Where? I've seen them as big as your nose. Listen, <laughs> listen. Is that solid? Yes. It could yes. do that in yes. a matter of weeks? Yes. Yep. So, How come I know you're wrong? Well, just like you know a lot of other things. Yes. I know I know it's either smaller than a marble or it's not solid. How could something keloid that big and be solid? And how long How long did it take? About six months. All right. It could do it in months. less than that. Okay. Uh, ear, nose, and throat specialist that has expertise in plastic surgery. I'd go to a plastic surgeon myself. Okay. But these guys, they're... A lot of ENT guys are excellent at plastic procedures, and they do a lot of that kind of stuff in their training. So that's probably fine. But, yeah, they will go over the options with you and uh, ultimately, I think, look for a surgical remedy for that. And now you know that whenever you have any kind of surgery or any kind of injury, that that's the potential when healing occurs. Uh, those are areas that are even more prone to keloid than other areas. Yeah, no Ears. more piercings. No more piercings, no. anything of that nature. Absolutely. Yeah. Adam? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just wanted to tell you that I love Ace Rock Cola. Oh, 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 oh yeah. So, yeah. That's oh. all I needed. Oh, God. I'm that's giving all, you an incentive. That's all I needed. Now. All right. A yeasty on the pecaroo. All right. That's right. I don't like Gina. We'll, we'll do some of Ace that Ace Rock, Rock Cola. Ace Rock Cola is the most annoying, disturbing. Now. Uh, can't you form another character like uh, <clears throat> SpongeBob SquarePants equivalent of some sort? You know, something that's... Uh, Huh? Listen, you, you got those kids, you watch that TV. This is what happens when you have kids. You, you watch 40 hours of Nickelodeon every day, <laughs> and then you come in here, and Drew wants to have conversations about Thomas the Tank Engine. And I, I go, I have no idea what Thomas the Tank Engine is. And he's, he's indignant now. You don't know Thomas the Tank Engine? I don't like no, Thomas you idiot. Tank. I sit around and watch porno. I'm not in sports highlights. I'm not watching Thomas the Tank Engine all day. True it's, masturbated to Thomas the Tank Engine once. It's true. Hey, that, but, come on, SpongeBob SquarePants is social comment. All right. They, I mean, Bob Newhart was on there as a guest character. and uh, no, Not interested. Okay. Not interested. You're just jealous they didn't ask you. The, they you, may have, and I just uh, don't. Maybe I turned them down. You remind me of Patrick the Starfish. <laughs> You'll have to watch it. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to set up the TiVo immediately so I can find out who Patrick the Starfish is. Dr. Bruce in here tonight. After saving a life is uh, hard at work here mm. at uh, Love Line, filling in for Dr. Drew, who will be back on Sunday. When we come back, we'll speak to uh, Amy. Wants to know why uh, weed makes her ears burn. This is an ear night. After this. Love Line. We'll be right back. Call on the 1-800-LOVE-191. Love Line on 94.7 NRK. Drew and Adam Carolla on 94.7 NRK. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. Saved a life tonight, Dr. Bruce. Got to feel pretty good about that. A little tragedy it. on the freeway. Bruce pulled over and did what he could do. Yeah. Saved a life. Uh, I'm convinced. <laughs> convinced he saved a life. Um, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Bruce uh, in tonight for Dr. Drew, who will be back in on Sunday night. Dr. Bruce is uh, the same as Dr. Drew, just a little geekier package. But uh, he knows. Drew, Drew all the time, all the time says how brilliant uh, Bruce is and how smart he is. And I'm like, yeah, really? Really? And he's like, oh, yeah, no, he's really smart. So, um... Drew really sings your praises. And, and and you know me better than he does, probably, and you don't think I'm brilliant and wonderful. So no, I know you got a high IQ, but it's like one of those things. <laughs> it's like, what's it good for? You know, it's like Rain Man, you know. Oh. But, but um, 
maybe I'll take you to Vegas see if we can win win some at the blackjack table. But <laughs> Bruce really he he knows probably more about medicine than Drew because you know Drew's been kissing the man's ass for the last eight years. He's been in and out of show business, you know, trying to get on the View and whatnot, no. and uh, doing all that. Men are from Mars and women are from Venus and all that crap. While Bruce has just been banging away, working the ER, taking tats off of hardened criminals, gang members. So uh, Bruce knows the laser, everybody. And if you got a question for him about what a laser can do, whether it's get rid of some crow's feet, some wrinkles, or some acne scarring, or um, stretch marks, or other kinds of scars or birthmarks, you can uh, ask him. Just tonight. the Drew plug. Drew's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, sure. This is a genius. He doesn't even know what's going on. <laughs> you kidding, Amy? Yeah. You're 15. Yeah. What's up? Um, I wanted to know why when I smoke weed, it makes like my inner ears like really burn very badly. Yeah, it could be a little. Uh, are you are you putting a bong up to the side of your head, or are you taking it? We do the ear <laughs> inhale. No. I'm smoking. Your so inner bad. ear. Yeah, like inside my ear, not like around like the outside ear. We can actually feel like inside my ear. Is you're not. It's it's a sign that you're not some, supposed to be smoking. Your inner ear is your brain, isn't it? No, it's not. And it, it feels like it's hurting or itching or what's it, it doing? It feels like it's burning. Like it really burning? Hurts. And okay. What do you do? What do you do to relieve it? Stick a pencil in there? No, I just put up with it. Smoke How much weed. weed do you smoke? Not much. It only takes a couple hits for the to start burning. <laughs> How often do you take a couple hits? Only like once a week. Yeah. Well, it'll become more. The reason it burns, you have a thing called a eustachian tube that goes from the back of your throat into the inner ear. And so you're getting smoke up in there, basically. And it's, oh, really? Yeah, it's the reason when people smoke, you get cancer of various places, not just your, your lungs. You get in your throat and uh, other soft tissues in that area. But essentially... You so know, you, you think some smoke is coming out of her ears like she's mad? No. It's a, <laughs> like in a cartoon when you got, mad? It's the inner part. You don't, uh, you don't actually blow smoke out of your ears. Though some people can do that. I su suspect if you had a punctured eardrum, uh, it's a possibility. <laughs> hey, uh, Stoner, why don't you start eating brownies? No. All right, listen, I I've not met many 15-year-old girls that had the uh, Hesher laugh like you got. Yeah. So that's a problem. All right, easy on the weed. And I don't normally tell girls this because they don't need their brains as much, you know, later on in life. But, you know, they have the kids and, you know, that kind of thing. But... They don't, they don't need to do the thinking. You know, yeah. It's kind of a man's job. But uh, even a girl's a little spazzy when she smokes too much weed. 15's too young. Eh? 15's too young. The stuff sticks around in the brain. If she's smoking it once a week, there's THC in her brain all the time. And now we found there are receptors. It changes your receptors. It changes you for life probably in some way and uh, yeah. puts you at risk later on for emotional problems. All right. Don't smoke the weed. Joe? Yeah. You're 30. What's up? Well, actually, I uh, have a question for the doctor. I uh, had a hair follicle exam done or a hair follicle test for uh, drugs a couple of weeks back. And uh, I take a, a lot of medication, one of which is a real heavy uh, opiate narcotic. And uh, when the results came back from the uh, hair follicle test, it showed positive for cocaine, this unbelievable amount or you know, amounts of, of cocaine were found in my hair, but my opiates were, were negative. Mm. And uh, it, it didn't make any sense. Uh, well, I did some research into it and found out that actually the chemical makeup between the opiate and cocaine are pretty close. Yeah. Uh, and I'm wondering what the chance, you know, what the likelihood of this test being screwed up, you know, is. Who's, who's doing the test? An employer? Uh, uh, no, well, no, it was done through the courts. Uh, what's uh, what's it for? You mean you're like on probation or something? No, for his family court. My uh, my ex wife, you know, would try to you know, I was trying to prove that that I'm doing more than uh, than prescription medication. Oh, what? yeah. Well, you know, motor oil and gasoline are pretty pretty closely related, and that's about as close comparatively. I mean, cocaine and morphine is they're related in that they're drugs, but there's no way in God's green earth that a drug test, even from a, a shoddy lab, is going to make that mistake. Is, is right. he no, I, is he doing morphine? Was yeah, opiates. Well, it's, he's it's doing a painkiller. It's oxycontin. oxycontin. Is what it is, and oh. I've been taking it for uh, five years, and I I take 160 milligrams three times a day. Is that a lot? Uh, oh. yeah. In fact, I'm I'm having an intrathecal pump put in to replace 
um, hopefully some of this oral medication because oh, yeah, you're resist. Uh, yeah, you're totally tolerant to that. Hold on a second. What what's the interfecal pump? Interfecal pump. It's it oh, goes into the spine. Funnier. Interfecal. Yeah, fecal's funnier though. But <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So it goes into the spinal fluid basically and provides direct uh, medication to the to the central. Is nervous you wear it all the time? Yeah, it's it's a pump and it continuously. They're different types. It's a but pump the, that goes beneath the skin, right? How do you replenish this pump? Is well, that's there... that you know? There's a specialty of pain medicine these days, and they did. The, does the pump have, have a reservoir yeah. in it, uh -huh. and it's filled with this drug? Depending, yeah. There's not just one drug, and but... it would administer a dose every it's very so often, minuscule dose. Because right. when you orally... but if some guy punches you in the back, it might all go at once, and then you just freak out in the no. wall, right? You know. It, no, no, because they they're not in the back. The pump there's a little in your balls. No, it, in the fatty tissue of the abdomen, under the skin. Depends. They have different. I put it in the put. balls. I put the reservoir in the balls. Give them a little exercise. Oh well, you're you know. Okay, so I, I'm a pioneer. I know. Yeah, you're, you're gonna totally fixated. So so he's taking a ton of this uh, oxycontin, right? And, right. But uh, over a period of time, you become resistant to it. Secondly, anything you take by mouth goes through the liver and gets chewed up before it gets into the bloodstream. So oh, is that why they put no the pump on him? Is it screwing up his liver? You think? Opiates don't screw up the liver long term, as far as we know. But uh, now, what happens? People that take things like Vicodin, the things that have Tylenol in them, or, screw up the liver, right? But anyway, you just are. First of all, they're not very efficient when they're taken by mouth because you have a first, you have this pass through the liver before it gets in your blood, and secondly, you develop a tolerance very rapidly to opiates anyway. What about it's... like when I take a sleeping pill? I should take it rectally now. <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, you know, that's up to you. I really can't think of any reason you sh that it wouldn't work. I'll yeah, it's slap, a very... a, slap a fecal pump right down there and just start to inhaling all I, my drugs rectally. I think that would work just fine. Hmm. <laughs> Close to your brain, too, probably. It's a good plan. Ooh. How dare you? <laughs> you're your physician. You can't uh, joke that yeah, way. That's my last night. Joe? Yeah. All right. So, um, maybe you should uh, have a, have this uh, an, a second opinion on this test, have it tested again. Okay. Well, but, here's but, here's but, look. I, I know that I know that the the two drugs are are nowhere related. I know we're talking we're talking you know vodka to Jack here, but what what I what I think the likelihood may be is that they didn't run the two tests together. In other words, they didn't do an opiate screen and they and they at the same time that they did a cocaine screen. So it could be that they that when they tested for opiates, uh. They, they marked it as cocaine because it was through the roof. Well, that's they, possible. But why why are you taking so much of the OxyContin? It's a I've chronic been on pain it for pain. five years, and uh, I'm a, I'm I have you know chronic pain syndrome. I had I had a uh, a pyloroplasty, a cholecystectomy, and um, uh, a fundoplication, and and they they messed up royally. I was in the military. I'm medically uh, retired now. Okay. All right. All right. So, Hold on but, a second. Hold on. I don't want to. I don't want to. Had a bunch of abdominal any. surgery, and they got he's got scar tissue that's probably cranking on a nerve, okay. and he hurts like hell all the time. Hold the on, let me ask you this: Why yeah. is everyone with chronic pain nuts? <laughs> is it is, is it my imagination, or is everyone with chronic pain crazy? No, they're not. They're not. No, but it, they're. It, but a lot of them are. No, it, it's a situation where people that don't have chronic pain can't imagine anybody. Oh, actually, oh, you saying so, guys like me? Okay, yeah. all right. I won't whisper anymore. Turn my mic back. Down, down, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. But here's the thing: the hair tests are notoriously I, not all right. Get not it accurate, read, but they're get not that accurate. Oh. He's, he's oh. you know, he's all in right. trouble because take the care of yourself, ordering. Joe. And I, I've, I, I don't know who I feel more sorry for, Joe or his kid. I don't know. Imagine, imagine being a volley between these two, Joe, with the oxycontin and the drug testing, and picture what kind of shape Mama's in, and you're the kid, and you're in the middle of this court battle. The raccoon family is the <laughs> alternative. <laughs> Let me just say one thing to him though. What? But I, just say it to him. He can hear you. Joe, get an get an attorney. Challenge the lab. Find out they have to have a uh, physician that screens these drug tests. And uh, if you challenge it, because that's a legitimate thing to challenge. Okay. And hair testing is notoriously an act. Take care of yourself, Tony. Yeah. You're 17. Yeah. What's up? At first, I want to say that I like the man show. Thank you. If you ever have an openness spot, I'd love to be on this show. Bitch! An opening spot, okay. We'll do that. Yeah. Um, I'm an underage stripper, and I'm trying to figure out if I should tell my mom or not, because I'm beginning to think she's suspecting. 
Well, how does underage stripper work? You guys work like uh, p parties and bar mitzvahs, not, Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, I oh, I, oh, I see. I see. You don't bill yourself as an underage stripper. No. Oh, I, I see. I lied on my interview. Uh huh. They think you're 18. Yeah. And you're 17. Yeah. And uh, what what kind of club do you work at? Oh, this is a club for ladies after hours club. You know. Mm hmm. How how do you do? Do you make good tips? Yeah. On a good night, I can make about three hundred in tips. Wow. And how, how naked do you get? All the way down to my socks. Oh, I see. You just have your sock over your dick? Uh, no, my no, no. Oh, I see. Your socks are on your feet. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, the whole, I didn't know they had, like, total, maybe maybe I'm naive, but I didn't know they had totally naked women's clubs. Like, I thought they kept a G-string on or something like that. So your pants are, you're completely naked. Pretty much. And you're yep. sh shaking your penis around in front of the women? Yeah, that's what you want to call it. And now, do you do you chub do you chub up a little bit before you head out? Yeah. Yeah, you got to, right? Yeah. You get a little blood circulating, right? <laughs> yeah. And what is your uh, what is what is your dance? You go out there like a fireman or something? Well, me, I dress up as a mailman. Mailman. See, okay, hold on. Th this is this is my theory, yeah, Bruce. I gotta hear this. I, I've said this uh, many times. When a man goes when when women go to see uh -huh. a guy strip the guy has to have a job it's like part of the fantasy it's got to be a cop it's got to be a fireman it's like a village people up there uh -huh. it's it's the yeah it's just, it's it's the sexy guys and military guys in the eventually it's funny to me it's distracting because now the cop has his pants around his ankles and he's dancing around that, that that's a distraction to me when women when guys go to see women dance you know what they dress as strippers <laughs> They come out wearing nothing, and guys are like, you got too much on. They come out wearing high heels and a thong, and guys are like, get rid of the thong and the heels. There's never, there's no fantasy. Women have to fantasize not only about the naked guy, but he's got a job. It's like exciting that the guy has a career, too. You should write a book. I knew he had a job. That's why I asked You're him. a genius about these things. Oh, they come out as the UPS guy, the male guy, How the cop you, guy. They're always the guys. These, you've been to these places. I know, I, know, I know the feminine psyche very well. Oh, okay. It's a turn-on that the guy has a job. Yeah. It's exciting that he's working for the postal department. So, Tony, yeah. how long have you been doing this? I've been doing it about mm, six months. Okay. Yeah, and he's making yeah, good money. Yeah, you're making good money. It's not good for you, though. You know, it's uh, that kind of sexual, like, I mean, that, that kind of sexual acting out, which it is a form of sexual acting out, uh, you know, it's going to tend to affect you later on in relationships and uh, how you see women and stuff like that. Yeah, but look, this guy's walking away with 300 seven, large every night. He's a teenager. When he's you were 17, you were mowing lawns and getting four bucks a year. Which is far more normal than being a male stripper at 17. Yeah, to me, it was all about the money. Right. But you know what? There's a payoff, a payback. There's always payback in life. Wait and what you're minute. doing Wait is not minute. good for It's Relax. not healthy for you. I'm Relax. not judging you. I'm not saying you're bad because you do this. Wait, look, he'd yeah. probably be selling selling coke to minors if he wasn't out on that stage shaking his <laughs> oh, finger like This is a Corolla moral creed. That's right. Yeah. Well, hey, you're doing I don't God's buy work, it. Tony. Yeah. All right, well, hold on. A... hold on a second. I've got to ask a few more questions. <laughs> what, what are your hours at this club? Well, I work from 9 to 1. 9 to 1. And do you do that on weeknights, too? Well, today I took off, but I work on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturday, and Sunday. Right. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to come out and see you, but you, you're getting some work in. And and do you do you, now? Do you go to school? Yes. And you you go to high school? Yeah, I'm and, a senior. And your your mom doesn't question you coming home at one thirty, two o'clock. I told her I have a job at this Allmark, Kmart, in our area. All right. Blue okay. Light special. All right. Now, are you you saving up your money? Yeah. And what are you going to do? You're going to go to college or something? Yeah. You are? Mm-hmm. You, you doing okay in school? Yeah, matter of fact, I've already been accepted to the school that I want to go to and you, everything like that. You visited the campus? Yeah. All right. This guy's way ahead of where I was. Oh. <laughs> Listen, if I was stripping at 17, I'd still be stripping. You would have been I, at the he, circus stripping. He, here, here's stripping the deal. Okay. I, here's what I'll say. He can strip until he goes to college. He can save up so much money. Oh, he's a guy who cares. A uh, bunch of fat housewives out there. He shakes his ass. No, nah, there's more to it than that. Bucks. Yeah. They ask him if he ever goes home with anybody for Listen, extra money. Listen, I, I, let me ask you this. It's not the most dignified way to make a living. But this guy's walking away with 300 bucks a night. 
I was cleaning the carpet of a colony kitchen when I was 19, making six bucks an hour. What did you ask him at the beginning? Isn't that humiliating? uh, Is that that not humiliating? You're not a good carrot at the end of the day. I mean, your experience, your success, based on your uh, prior history, that's not a good uh, role model for anybody either, and neither is this guy. Here's a a question for you. What did you ask him if he does to get the blood flowing there at the... What does he do? He chubs up. He chubs chubs up, up. yeah. He chubs. That was a fishing turn. No, he chubs up. He's got to go back there. He's got to look at some Playboys or something, get a little blood circulating before you step out on stage. Oh, okay. Just looking at Playboys. There's no, what do you call them in the porno industry? Fluff 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 girls? Yeah, fluff girls. No, they don't. Tony, they don't have fluff girls there, do they? No. No, you just got, you got to do your own work. Yeah. Right. That's fine. What songs do you dance to? Well, the DJ plays whatever he wants. Oh, really? Yeah. First, any sexual first abuse in the past? Did you have any? What was your family like growing up? All that kind of stuff. Um, pretty cool, pretty much. No yeah. abuse. Never had any sexual abuse. Never any. No. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, here's the deal, Tony. You, uh, if you say, how did your you money, get in that industry? At seventeen. How did you even find one of those Look, places at seventeen? He's built. Leave him alone. Save your money. You don't buy any drugs or jewelry or any. Crap That's not what like ROTC that. is, is it? They Save, don't recruit you there. Though. No. Save your money. <laughs> Go to college, but you can dance until you're going to have consequences, Tony. I'd get out of it and I'd go see a therapist. <laughs> there's something go. Oh, there's something going on. You know what? The average seventeen year old is not in that a is male a dr- the strip average club. seventeen year old doesn't look like Tony nude. It doesn't matter if he does. He doesn't go to the strip club. He goes to the gym, plays basketball. I've had anal sex and I have passed out a couple yeah. times. And who's paying? Hey him Anderson, to- you got any him? other recording in there? Of That's me or enough. What? Who's God. paying him to play basketball, genius? Who's paying you? <laughs> All right. What are you, are you stoned? No. This guy's got... This is a very serious problem. Right. Uh, this is going to have uh, long-term so, consequences to right. this behavior. And there's Those clubs, there's yeah. drugs. Just like all the guys I knew in high school who were getting laid. Boy, they really have hell to pay now. Is this guy... You think he's gay? No. All right. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. Hello. This is your radio. Radio. Love line. We'll be right back. This is... <laughs> On 94.7 NRK. Hey, everybody. Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce. Dr. Bruce doing a great job filling in for Dr. Drew tonight, who will be back on Sunday night. Dr. Bruce, board certified. Maga, 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 maga. And uh, very, uh, very competent. Knows uh, as much, if not more, than Dr. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Drew, even if he has difficulty conveying it. <laughs> Jordan? Yep. 15 years old. Adam, I'd like to say before we get to the question that you are a god. Thank you. Thank you. I watch the man show all the time and I love it. Thank Isn't Satan you. a god of some sort also? Yeah. He's yeah. it's a, it's a <laughs> god of hellfire. <laughs> all right there, Jordan, what's up? Well, I'd like to know how big the average penis at my size should be. Uh, flaccid, about, a, what, you're 15? Uh-huh. Uh, between 10 and 11, flaccid, and erect, anywhere from uh, 14 to 16, 14, you're 15. S- I mean, look, it, listen, I'm not going to kid you. At 15, if your penis is, you know, 8 or 9 flaccid and, you know... 10 to 12 or something erect, it's no big deal because some guys, you know, your penis continues growing until 21, and it's no no big deal. But why? How big is yours? Four and a half. Oh, oh man. Flaccid, right? Yeah. yeah. That, that's not erect, right? No, not erect. Not erect. It's a four and a half? Erect is about six. About six? Oh, man. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Jordan. You, start, you just get good with your mouth. That's all. No. Nah. Jordan, you know the way your voice is a little high pitched right now? Okay. As that deepens, you're, you know, you'll have other effects of uh, the hormones that deepen your voice, including growth of your penis. So you're perfectly normal at your age, and uh, you'll go on to bigger and better, better things. things. All right. Uh, Melissa. Yeah. You're 15? Yeah. What's up? Um, this is guy at school. I really like him a lot. Mm-hmm. And my best friend, she knows how I feel. Right. And she has taken two of my ex-boyfriends. Right. And she's talking to him a lot. And she, she wants she wants a third boyfriend now? I don't know. We're not going out because he still has his girlfriend and he's trying to break up with her. <laughs> and we're on winter break right now. Right. How long does that process take uh, to, to break up with someone these days at 15? 
Is that, that about 10 minutes, 15 minutes? It depends on who it is and if they can break up with them easily. Oh, I see. Sometimes, right, it's a little messy. There's a lot of paperwork. She's in Milan. He's in, <laughs> uh, he's, he's in Paris. If the difficulty corresponding. Let me translate Adam's humorous <clears throat> message here. It's very normal to have quickly ending and beginning relationships at that age. And what your friend's doing is not nor not good and it doesn't sound like she's your friend, but it would be better to lose her as a friend than to try and, you know, get back at her or uh, try and repair the relationships that, that uh, fell apart. Because yeah, of her. Listen, let me say something about you chicks. All you do, you know why you guys have friends? So you can complain about them. This goes well into adulthood, too. This is all women do is they complain about their friends. Either they put on weight or they're wearing something that doesn't make them look good or, God forbid, they should wear the same thing. You know why guys have friends? So they can have friends. Right. Women have friends. Here's how women... You know why women have friends? They have... they it, If they have three friends, Shopping. when they're with the one friend, they talk about the one that's not there. Oh. And when we're, they're with the other, they talk about the other one who's not there. That's all they do is talk smack about each other. They they steal each other's boyfriends, and uh, and then they get older and they just complain that everyone's fat, and <laughs> and how they don't deserve anything. And then and then as they get older, they start telling you what cosmetic surgery the other one has had done. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she dyes her roots. Oh, her roots. Those roots. You know, you should save your wisdom. This, and put it in a book. There should thank be a book you. That you've written. Listen, if you if, if, <clears throat> if this girl this girl steals every boyfriend you have, she's not your friend. Right, dump her. And this guy who is uh, allegedly in the process of breaking up with his girlfriend, but it hasn't happened yet. You give him another week, and if it's not done, you move on. But this is like the 19-year-old guy with the broken heart. You know, they can't... 15, these are growing experiences to have, to have a boyfriend and then lose him. And then, you, you know, it's more important to go through them in a healthy way and to move on and then find a friend that's not going to do this to you. Good. We'll be right back. She's going to be pregnant this time. That next year and strung out on crack. We'll be back. All right, guys. Looking to hook up? Call the Dateline. Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? Call the Dateline. One call is all you need to make. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. Loveline on 94.7 NRK. We'll be right back in a minute. Hey, y'all. Loveline. I'm Adam. That's uh, Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew will be back. He's on uh, a little tour going through the Panama Canal and uh, going to Cuba mm. and saying he's going to meet with um, Castro. <laughs> he's high. He's so high. <laughs> I like that. I, I'm going to hear all about his crappy stories when he comes back. I guarantee Aye. he doesn't meet with Castro. But Susan went with him in the triplets, right? Yeah, the whole family. Oh, man. Maybe Susan was going to meet with Castro. Ain't no boat big enough for uh, me and Drew's wife. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let me tell you something. The uh, the Titanic, not big enough. <laughs> that's right. If it was just the two of us on that boat, it would not be big uh, enough. I'd love to see her. I, if she was on if she was on an aircraft carrier and it was just the two of us, uh -huh. I would be towed behind on a dinghy. Oh, I agree. A 200-foot anchor chain. I, mean, I get along great with her. I just listen. It's dynamite lady. Dynamite lady. All right. She's not listening to the show, no, right? No. Okay, fine. Dynamite yeah. lady. Uh, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Bruce, board certified and all that good stuff. Dr. Bruce uh, saved a life. Oh, please. I think he did. On the way I in. I don't think so. Car accidents, 80 miles an hour on the freeway, airbags deployed, guy careening off the center divider. Bruce coming in covered in blood. A hand that was red, like it was just painted red, like he was the <laughs> devil for Halloween. <laughs> Saving a life. Blood coming out of a guy, unconscious. Bruce first on the scene. I'll probably get sued. Yelling, there's no time for backup. I'm yelling, get me out of here, Corolla's going to have my ass. Going in there, putting <laughs> his hand late, in the never mouth. It. And let me tell you something about uh, Bruce. He doesn't care what color you are or what God you pray to when he's got to save your life. No. He doesn't care if you're an atheist or you're, you're one of them uh, towel heads or uh, wet back or darky or chink, champ, uh, mick, I gotta wop, go. I gotta, I gotta go. heeb. I got he don't care what you are. 
He don't care who you pray to. He'll go in and he'll save your life because that's what he's sworn to do. That's Dr. Bruce, everybody. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you kiss George Clooney's ass because he's making a mint playing some guy on TV that uh, barely gets his hands dirty, but not... Uh, not Bruce. He's out there patrolling the nation's highways and saving lives. Back to reality. Christina wants to go to the prom with you, Adam. All right. And speaking of the highways, and let me just say this. That, that accident was probably caused because uh, the roads were slick. Yes. Because, uh, because it was raining, right? Going too fast. Now, let, let, me just, let me just say this. I, I, have, I say this uh, every so often, but I've not said it in a while. Uh, weathermen. Southern California weathermen. <sighs> I, I, get, I give you guys a couple of options of what you need to do with your life. You either need to go to work for your cousin, stuffing sofas at the factory, put a bullet in your head, or just crawl under the desk and start giving oral to, <laughs> to whoever the but, anchor is. Because what, you are to not, uh, let me finish, not only are you people useless, but you're actually worse than not being there because you hand out erroneous information. Well, you, okay. And here's what I'm saying. Now, just shut up and let me rant here, Bruce. If I'm driving down the road and I stop for directions, I'd rather have the guy say, I don't know where 4th and Elm is, rather than point me the wrong direction and have me go way out of my way. And I'm sitting home watching, this is on New Year's, or the New Year's Eve, and I'm watching the five-day weather report. Right. And let me tell you something. You jackass is given the five-day weather report when you can't figure out what's going on the following morning is ridiculous. Do you understand? Oh, this yeah. is ludicrous. And these guys are telling me that tomorrow's going to be a little overcast, then it'll clear up, it's going to be beautiful on New Year's Day, it's going to be sunny, and then some clouds, and more sun, and more sun, and as the week goes on, more sun and spectacular weather, and the guy says, I guarantee it. It has been nothing but pea soup out here, cold. Might as well move to Seattle. But here's another issue. And it's raining as I'm driving in tonight. I'm thinking to myself, what are you people good for, and who holds you accountable? But you ever notice the guys are always perfectly quaffed, they're clothes horses, and they're always a comedian. They got some gig on the side. That's right. That's what by the perfect tan, the hair's never like, out of like place, and, and they're promoting the self promotion to the uh, I, here's my point you homo spend a little <laughs> less time at the tan salon and a little more time at the college now, they and see threw if you can in figure jail. out what you're doing did you hear rio de janeiro listen on new year's eve he said that they're going to be severe thunderstorms and horrible rain right and they they are prosecuting him in rio de janeiro for a violation of the public trust or Good. something like that first I, time a weatherman's been i listen i, I hope they stone him to death <laughs> Listen, you pricks, you don't know what you're talking about, and here's the deal. I don't know what I'm talking about either, but I don't do weather. <laughs> I just shut up about weather, and you just shut up too. Let's just expand sports. Can't we just expand the sports? Do we need these idiots up here pointing at the map, no. talking about what to wear, talking about Mother Nature, doing that crap where they say, uh, sun up at uh, 548 in the morning, sun down. At, who cares when the sun's going down? The sun goes down when it's dark. I don't want to expand sports. Just what's, expand the sports. What's with Australian rules soccer results? I don't. Three, when I'm driving home at 2 in the morning on National Public Radio, why am I hearing British care. soccer I don't care. I don't care. I would rather have more no. sports than these idiots talking, wanna... uh, talking their ass off. It's raining, and it's supposed to be nothing but sunny now, and the point is, is these people don't know, and we shouldn't listen to them. Right, Let's heal some babies! All right. <laughs> Christina? Hello, Adam. Hi. Um, Yeah. I was wondering if you wanted to go to my prom with me. Yeah? Yeah. Where, uh, where is it? Um, it's at Wood Creek High School. It's located in Roseville, like right by Sacramento. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that's a little out of my range. I was just there yesterday. Oh, really? I was in Roseville. Why don't you go to the prom with her? No, it's okay. She's underage. You can't go either. You know, I don't think you want to go with me because my prom date died. <laughs> I'm serious. How'd that happen? Uh, she died of like some kind of like a brain aneurysm or something. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, not not that night, but just uh, <laughs> a couple of years later, just dropped dead. Huh. That happens. People have it. Hey, yeah, I'm the kiss of death. Have you ever seen Adam, Christina? In person? No. Have you, do you know what he looks like? Yeah, I, mean, I know what he looks like. All right. Yeah. yeah. Come on, please. Yeah, I mean, you want to, but like. I mean, if I go to the prom, I and mean, we really got to do it right. Like, we got to get an eight ball and a hotel room <laughs> and that kind of thing. I mean, are you cool? Uh, I don't know. Do you have parents? Yeah. yeah. You got friends? Yeah. Because I may need more than one date. That's cool. I, I can get you take, like, one, four or five checks. You might need a couple of chaperones if you've got parents. <laughs> no, you listen. You, and, and what do you like, by the way? You want a, you want a um, pin-on corsage? You want a wrist corsage? I want a wrist. 
Okay. How about a knee or ankle corsage? <laughs> thinking of shaking things up a little this uh -huh. year. Mm, I don't know. Do you have a theme to your prom? Um, we don't know yet, actually. Do, do you? Is it is it a ho hotel or do you do it at the gym? It's <laughs> going to be at a hotel. Okay. Four star. Probably. Okay. We'll get a room there, right? Uh, maybe. Is you, you think your parents would be cool with that? I don't think so. No. Oh. Okay. Well, I guess, I guess we could break away from the prom. Maybe um, do the coke, get it on, and I just get get you out of there, sitting on a cab back, and I just stay in the room, raid the mini bar, can get your dad's credit card or something. I have a credit card. All right. Well, I'm going to need that for incidental. Do you have a boyfriend? Me? Yeah. Not at the time. No. Oh. Do you have? Uh, would you like an autographed picture of Adam? Oh, seriously. Yeah. Do you, do you? What do you look like? Do you think you'll get a prom date? Uh, I'm totally going to get one. I just wanted to know if you wanted to. Oh, are you hot? I don't know if I'm hot or not. It's just I think I look cute. Well, like, do you think like you're senior, right? Yeah. Do you do you, you think you might have to stoop to asking like a junior or sophomore or something like that? Heck no. Because that's how you know the desperate people are when they're going like when the chick, the chick's a senior, she's going with the freshman. That means she had a, that was a last minute job. I know mm. You're fat. Done that. True, please. What's that? I know a couple of people who have done that. Yeah. And why, when is your prom? In April, did you say? Yeah, it's 420. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Why, uh, shouldn't it be a little later on? I thought there were more, more May. Um, no? no. All right. Christina, I'm just curious. Do you have any abuse issues in the past? Oh, no. Uh, why would you ask Adam Carroll? Out of all the people, why not, you know, ask, uh, you know, somebody that's in the sports or somebody with an upstanding image? I think we could have a good time. Yeah. That's She's such a cutie pie. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, Christina? Yeah? Um, I may have to run this through my publicist or manager or something. We'll, we'll fax over the appropriate material and we'll see what we can do, all right? Uh, yeah. Why don't you ask Dr. Drew? And so, I mean, if I had a choice between Adam and Dr. Drew... I don't want to go with Dr. Drew. That would be the healthy choice. I'd recommend therapy for you, Christina. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll, do a man, we'll make a man show bit out of it. <laughs> I, listen, I'm, I'm going to give a... I'll, uh, a, a uh, who am I talking to? <laughs> Damien. Damien, quit making small talk over there. Get Christina's uh, phone number. Uh, all right. How long have you been blind, deaf, and dumb? Christina, this, <laughs> this yeah. probably isn't going to happen, but it might. So we're going to get your phone number, all right? And, okay. And, all uh, right. Christina, I want to talk to your parents. No, she's fine. I'll pass the parents' number to Dr. Drew. She's fine. Yeah, we'll, just, she's we'll, fine. we'll get a limo. We want to keep her fine, Adam. We'll do a little Coke. Yeah. Coca-Cola. We'll do a little nose candy. Yeah. We'll go to the uh -huh. party. Have some ear candy. Do some, uh, like, Jaeger shots or something, and then it's up to the room. These are your uh, fantasies from, from high school. It never yeah. happened is what these are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the yeah. the oh. prom experience you never had. Tell us, Adam, oh. share with us. Yeah. Ex ex yeah. yeah. It's tough. Tell us about it. Prom's tough. I didn't have any money. I was like, uh, I want to go to the beach and get a tan that day. It's like ditch day. Uh -huh. Prom day is like senior ditch day, too. Right. So everyone ditched and went down to the beach and I like fell asleep out <laughs> on the sand and got sunburned. So I look like a beat <laughs> in my picture. Yeah, it's a mess. Uh, a mess. And now my prom date's dead. I'll tell you. She died. I mean, like I said, not not of that night. Probably, I, I think what helped kill her is the uh, constant uh, the memory uh, harassment. Of the, yeah, yeah she's exactly. taken from society. Her blood pressure went up and burst that aneurysm. Billy? Yep. You're 18? Yep. What's up? Well, um, I got fired from my job a few weeks ago. Mm hmm And I've just been drinking a lot. All righty. And I've been, I've been drinking for a while now. Uh -huh. I need to know when you're passing the limit of just getting drunk and, like, getting to, like, the alcoholism stuff. Yeah. How you, well, how long ago did you get fired? I don't know. A while ago. Why did you get... Like a week or two? What's that? Oh, why did I get fired? I got... Oh, that? I met my friend's job at a gas station. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you just go over there to steal some free beer? No. A little bit, but I'm not writing that. How, why'd you, uh, why'd you... Why did you get fired? Yeah. Well, there were, there were budget cuts and the whole... Like, 52 people got laid off. How old were you when you started drinking? I don't know. Well, I don't know. 15. Any family history of uh, drinking problems? Like your father have any drinking problems, or your uncle or grandfather, or anything like that? No. Not drinking problems, but... Drugs. All my, all my uncles like to drink. How much yeah. How much are you drinking? I don't know. I know I drink. Every day in the month of December, I was drunk. Okay. Yeah. I've been drunk almost every day, too. But it's not that... You know, I don't drink that much. I have a couple glasses well, of red no, wine. I don't, I'm not the beer type. Yeah. I like, I like hard liquor. 
All right. And I just drink my, as long as I got a bottle of 151, I'm happy. All right. All right. Okay, so we've, well, est- honest, we've established you have, a, you have a drinking problem. The fact that you're calling here and you're thinking of, thinking that you might have a problem, I can tell you, you do have a problem. And if you... <laughs> He's only drinking Bacardi 151. Every day and getting smashed, yeah, for a month. And, and drinking to deal with feelings, all these things. You can continue to drink and really know you're an alcoholic with a lot more severe consequences in the future, or you can be a smart guy and, and realize at this point that even though you haven't had the tremendous consequences some people do, that you've got the genetics and the reactions that people do when they uh, when they are alcoholic. I'd say, yeah, go to an, start going to AA. God, he's yeah. not going to do that. I, I think he is. Hey, you wait do? a second. Yeah, because how many guys at this point would call here and when, I, let me I, tell you something. I just think he's being a jackass. I don't really think he's going to do anything about it. I can't. You know what? I don't know. That's not my problem. The pro- hey, Billy. Yeah. Are you, you you think you want to stop drinking? Well. Um, Sometimes, but I know, like, a lot of people told me to quit, and mm-hmm. I joke around with that. I did quit. I quit quitting, and right. I was drinking again. Right. You know what? You're so glad. I mean, just a little bit talking to you, you got the feel of somebody that's got an alcoholism uh, uh, problem, and it's going to be tough to quit. You'll find it's a lot harder than you think, and the, the joking about it that you're doing is pretty characteristic. So if you know anybody that's gone to AA or if you just... Anywhere in the United States, anywhere in the world, you can open a phone book and look up AA and find a meeting. And, uh, you know, there's you don't have to sign up. You don't have to make reservations. You just walk in and you'll meet somebody that's, a, meet a lot of people that are a lot like yourself. And you'll really save a lot of heartache and misery in your life. Well, yeah, here's the deal. Or you could just keep drinking, lose a bunch of money, screw your liver a little bit, uh, punch out your stepdad. And get a couple of 502s, wrap your car around a uh, telephone pole, maybe kill one of your friends when he's uh, in the passenger seat, not belted in. And then get sober eight years from now with that uh, sort of the wreckage of your past behind you. Or you could just go, screw it, I'll do it now. Yeah. I I think Billy's, I think there's a lot more going on in Billy's life. And I think he's really, I don't know. I don't think there's probably had some blackouts. Oh, okay. Consequences. I thought you meant good stuff. No, bad stuff. Right. I think he knows. And and I think he's probably in a bad place and you'd be surprised the help you can get. And the, uh, uh, the recovery that you'll see, the success you'll see people that were just like you are now quit drinking and all right. Didn't think there was any hope. Good enough. Okay. Mark. Yeah. What's up? Uh, yeah, I have a question for you guys. Actually, right. a couple of questions. All right. Um, for okay, we'll start with the first one. I'm twenty. I'm twenty three. I'll be twenty four next month, and I've never been in a serious relationship, and it's because because of my penis problem that I have. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm not cut, and when I have sex or when I pull it back, it's too sensitive, and when I put on a condom and try to have sex with someone. I can't feel nothing. How gay are you? All right. Yeah. Well, that guy's ass is pretty tight. It can cause damage to the uh, head. Well, of the I, penis. yeah, and I'm just kind of sick of, of faking orgasms, or you know, I, I need to pull out and masturbate, and and I don't know if it's the past couple years. Um, yeah. I mean, basically, my life is one night stands. I don't. I haven't been in a relationship. Are you gay? I'm gay. Yeah. Um, hmm. And I, I another thing is is I don't know if it's it's because I'm smoking too much pot. I don't know if that's that's not letting me have a, an orgasm. If it's if I'm watching too much porn, I mean, I really don't know. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. my thing is like, yeah. should I maybe go in and get circumcised? And, and is that painful? Is well, let me let me ask you a couple questions here, Mark. First off, do you think gay guys smoke more weed than straight guys? I think they do. Uh, Oh, gay, gay, gay boys know how to party. They, I mean, not that straight men don't, but no, gay boys party. I mean, we, yeah, gay yeah. Guys, well, no, I'm not gonna. Everybody spot whatever. But. I, I know, but I, I think, I think. Here's what I think. I think gay men, like, like maybe at 19, but at age 40, gay guys smoke weed, and straight guys have given it up by then, or at least a yeah, lot of them yeah, have. Yeah, I agree with you. Just like, just what like is that? Bars too. I think, I think. When I go to a bar, I see a lot more 40, 30, 40 year old men, you know, dancing like, you know, eight. Well, because they got it because they're cruising their whole life. Right, right. And I mean, when you're a straight guy, you're 40, you're home, you got four kids, you're waiting to die like right, Dr. Bruce. Right. You're yeah. like, please, yeah. Lord, take me. Please have something fall on the house so <laughs> right, I can just right. go peacefully in my sleep. But these gay guys are out whooping it up. 
Because every day is a holiday when you're right. gay. Every you know every day's fun and, and yeah, I know. And everyone's cruising and stuff, you know. And you, it gets it gets old. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. But I'd still like to be gay. Yeah, I still would. <laughs> oh, I'm it's sure a, it's a better life. Yeah, well, it's, no, it really it's is. Fun. It's fun. You All know, right, but but let me ask you this: is also too with gay guys, you want to get high is code for can I blow you pretty much, right? Like you want to go somewhere. Mm, oh yes. Uh, uh, you know what? I don't know. I just I I always get. Pretty lucky every time I, you know, need to get laid, I get laid. Yeah, you know, you know why? Because you have guys deciding whether you're going to get laid or not, and that's a sure thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. you imagine that? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, see, that's code. Like, uh, street boys. whenever I used to hitchhike, if a gay guy picked me up, he's always like, "You want to get high? You want to get high?" Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like that's what uh, that's what Shrew <laughs> asked me when he picked me up. You want to get high? <laughs> want to get high? You know what I want to get high means? It means you want to go back to my apartment, hang out a little. Smoke a well, little weed you know, I, and see I mean, what happens. I get happens. high because I like it. Yeah, all right. You know what I mean? I don't all get right. high because I need to get laid. No, I know. Later. I know. All right. So your, your penis, uh, you have a little stenosis there of the uh, prepuse, and it uh, pulls back. It cracks. It gets broken. It's 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 shrunken a little bit. No, the, uh, I have a large penis. I have a really large No, not, not your penis. I'm not questioning your penis size, but I mean the foreskin. Right. When the foreskin gets pulled back over the end of the penis. Right. Does it does it bleed then? Does it, it, it doesn't crack? bleed. It, it just it just my the you know the the head becomes very sensitive. Like you can't even touch it. Oh like, right, ah, right, right. Know, but, okay. And then when I when I when I do have sex, right. um, I, I I don't have sex without a condom. I've, I've right. never had sex without a condom, and I'm a right. I'm kind of a, I'm I'm really afraid to have sex without a condom. Right. Yeah. Sorry, but but then again, I'm also like God. I'm gonna be 24 next month, and I haven't experienced an orgasm by you know screwing someone i have right. to like stop and masturbate and to me that's and maybe that's a reason of why i'm not in relationship is because uh, when it gets that far i get uh, kind of embarrassed yeah, yeah no that, that's not the reason you're not in a relationship when you get in a relationship you get to do all that embarrassing stuff without well, being so freaky been in about a relationship it like that okay let me give you some advice uh a uh start focusing on a relationship right and b you got to toughen up the end of your penis let me tell you how to do that. Let me tell you how to do that. Pull, when you're just putzing around the house in your underpants, right. those uh, thong backs or bikini cuts you guys wear, right? You wear I the wear bikini boxers. cut? I don't, oh, boxers. I don't know what you wear, but I wear boxers. Well, boxers. I can't wear boxers because the fly always comes open and my yeah, penis know, comes out wrong, when I'm standing but... around. It feels weird. I have to pull it back <laughs> in. Oh. <laughs> okay, listen, Spare Mark, You details. here's what you need to do. All right. You need, when when you're just flaccid, right? Right. And you're just walking around in your boxers around the house, uh, watching Oprah or whatever you guys do all day. I watch porn all day. Okay, okay. Gay porn? No, I like gay and straight porn. Oh, really? And, you know, I, I'm expecting one to come into the, inter to the mail soon. Oh, okay, good, good. Me too. I hope ours don't get mixed up. Like God, I pray they don't. Just listen to me. Listen to me, Mark. I want you to pull your foreskin back and let your uh, exposed head of your penis just dangle in right. your boxer shorts as you walk around. Do this every day, okay. even if it's a little bit uncomfortable. Right. Every day. Let the air hit it. Let the sun hit it. Let it rub up against the side of your boxer shorts. It, it will begin to toughen up. Just like a man who gets who who gets uh, a circumcision. If you got circumcised, you'd have to deal with the same thing for a while. Yes. So you okay. pull that skin back. Do it on your own. Will it stay back on its own? Yeah. All right. If it doesn't stay back, you can use one of those twist ties that come with the hefty back. No, pull this. Pull the skin back. Do this every day for an hour. Hey, what? That's good. Oh, come That's on. That's good. I'm serious. Uh, every day for an hour. Let. Let that sensitive penis that's not used to, to touching air. See, it's too sen Here's what it is. Here's what's going on. He has a foreskin over his penis all day and all night. Then he gets with one of these guys. He gets him back. He gets ready. He gets behind. He starts getting ready to, you know, do that uh, act against nature and God. <laughs> the head comes out of the penis, and it's painful because it's not been exposed to anything. He needs to pull the foreskin back, walk around the apartment, let it dangle. Let's bang it up against the table, bang it up against the counter. 
Let it bang up against the underpants. Toughen it up. Mark has real issues. Mark, I'd like to ask him yeah. about his... No. Yeah. No. no. Substance abuse is rampant in the gay community. They like... The, you know what they love? No, they love they. that amyl. They love those poppers. I don't know what they that's like. That's what they like. Wait a second. That's enough. Oh, He's fine. He's not fine. Paul, I'm, Mark, Mark, I swear to... Hold on a second. Mark. Mark, don't listen. Don't talk. Mark, don't worry. listen to Bruce. Mark? Gay Mark? Yeah. Okay. You pull that penis out, even if it's uncomfortable and uh, and it hurts a little bit. You walk around the apartment for a couple hours a day that way. All right. Quit you know smoking pot. And then, right, and then, quit watching porn. And then you for call back. Call back in two weeks and Wait tell me. Wait a second. Get right? to a therapist. No, that's yes. fine. Wait a second. Gay relationship, straight relationship, intimacy. This guy's got an issue with intimacy. This guy's got a substance abuse problem, and he's watching for oh, that much. Smokes a little weed. He's probably had some history of some sort of issues in the past and i'm not saying that's why he's gay but certainly this guy's oh, got yeah. some very unhealthy uh, babies a circumcision that bible out a circ excuse uh, me i know you're very religious you're very pious man dr Bruce. i'm offended he's a he's a he's a doctor but he believes the earth's only two thousand years old. i didn't i said i believe in creation uh, the, uh, the bad religion uh, conflict just quiet oh, my down God. quiet down with your voodoo yes. over there jane caller jane wake up 18 years old, you, you put her to sleep dreams. with your inane <laughs> ramblings. having dreams about her father is the problem. I right, Jane's having dreams about her father, Oops. sexual dreams about her father. we we got to take ourselves a little break. This is your nose and throat night. Has been <laughs> able to breathe through his nose for two years. All right, that's not a good question. No. okay, this is better. This well, Melissa wants to know why this guy uh, had an orgasm in 30 seconds, wants to know if it's normal. Uh, and uh, oh, she asked her here, mom here. about it. This is a better one. This is better. Genital warts. No. Right. We haven't had genital warts call. I don't care. I'm tired of those genital warts. All right, we're going to talk to uh, Melissa, 16. All right. I have warts. When? <laughs> is that me? <laughs> yeah, that's wow. pretty good. What well, did I, I say that? Adam. My laser. I'll okay. laser your warts. I don't have warts. Yeah, sure. I <laughs> have warts. Drew, like Drew check. I won $100 from Drew because he checked my penis with a Woods light. He did? And muriatic acid. What's happened to his standards? <laughs> I don't know. Next thing I know, I got my penis out. He's checking it with a, fly, uh, with a, with a black light. Oh, that's a mental picture I don't yeah, want to read. that's right. That's <laughs> right. And I came, out, I came out on top like I always do. Really? So he, said, he, said, he said my penis looked like it was never used. You probably switched out the la the light bulb in this woods lamp no. for us. Suspicious. It looked like it was brand Suspicious. new. Oh. Maybe it hasn't been used. You can't get uh, you can't get general warts masturbating, can you? <laughs> I, I'm going to flog you with my penis. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. Love line with Adam Carolla and Doctor Drew. One eight hundred love one nine one. Wow wow wow! You feel you feel you feel you feel you feel Love line on 94.7 NRK. Love line, love line on 94.7 NRK. Love line, 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 love line. Hey, y'all. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. Dr. Bruce doing a nice job tonight. I don't care if that uh, Drew ever comes back. Well, unacceptable. <laughs> uh, doc, Dr. Bruce a good guy because he's a human being, whereas uh, Drew's more of a robot. Well, unacceptable. That's right. you, you get to talk to Bruce about stuff, cars, gu guitars. He, yeah. he likes junk. He's a, kind of a human being. All right, someone's phone, is someone's phone ringing out there? Some drive me nuts. I don't what is anything. that? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. All right, listen. You hear that? No. Anderson, you hear that? And you hear that? Yeah. All right. What's the thing about, what is it? Like, how does this work? The higher your IQ is, the uh, less you notice anything in life. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It just turns you into a retard. <laughs> like, you become so caught up in your own crap and your, your high, your genius IQ that you just don't notice anything. Uh, Drew is extremely focused. He's he just doesn't, know, he doesn't know anything. He doesn't he know a thing. He knows doesn't know a thing. He, he knows continues nothing. to read. He and... knows nothing. No, he knows a lot. He knows nothing. Jeff? Yeah? You're 14? Yeah, I can't breathe through my nose, and I, it's been doing that for two... All right, hold on. We weren't going to talk to him. We're going to talk to uh, <laughs> Melissa. Okay. Hi. Hey, you're 16. Yeah, I'm 16. What's up? Okay, well, a few days ago, 
um, me and my boyfriend were fooling around, and mm-hmm. I decided to give him oral sex. Oh. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> he orgasmed in about 30 seconds. Yeah. And I was talking to my mom. Of all people, I talked to my mother, and she thinks there's something wrong with that, and so do I. And I was wondering if that's mm-hmm. normal for a guy to, like, you know, come in 30 seconds. Yeah. Your mom wasn't concerned that you were at 16 performing oral sex on somebody? Well, my mom, I mean, what could she possibly say? I mean, she did the same thing when she was my age. Well, that's why she's not concerned. How do you know she did the same thing when she was your age? She's told me. Oh. Mm. And uh, and she's only um, only 11 years older than Melissa, right. so she didn't know. You want to be ashamed of yourself. She told you she did the same thing? Yeah. She, she said, you know, back in the day, I used to blow a lot of guys. <laughs> well, not exactly. She didn't put it that way. How old's your boyfriend? My boyfriend's 17. 17. Mm. And does he have a lot of experience sexually? Yeah. He's had sex with a lot of girls, and I did not think that was normal because I have like gave oral sex to more than one guy. Not a lot, right. but it took them like 20 minutes about, and it took him 30 seconds, and I think that was right. Well, maybe you've refined your technique. <laughs> Refine my technique? Well, um, what's there to really say? Yeah, well, you can just say thank you. Yeah. Um. The last thing in the world that you ever on, want to say your dad, about your dad is not Your dad is not around, is he? No. 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 He killed himself a long time ago. <laughs> what happened to him? He's at work. He's at work. I mean, is, is he with your mom, though? Yeah, he's with my mom. They're married. Oh, but she doesn't tell. Does she tell him about this? No. 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 Let me tell you, Bruce, you have some daughters, right? Yeah. Here's, here's what I tell Drew. Here's what I tell Drew. You and he's going to do this. True. When when his daughter, he's going to do this. When his daughter gets a little bit older, she's like eight or nine now. He gets, uh, uh, you know, fifteen, yeah. fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. He's going to keep. I told him just keep a cyanide capsule, and just keep it in your cheek, between your cheek and gum, just tuck back there. <laughs> and if you walk into a room and she's blowing a guy, or she starts telling you about this guy's <laughs> semen tastes bad, or something like that, you just chomp down on it, and you, you're dead before you hit the floor. Or you understand? Daughter, you just, you just boom. If his daughter That's ever it. called the show, that would be the. Right. Drew, I said, keep that in your cheek. You open the door. Your daughter's on top of some dude, and, and it's just you just chomp down. You don't even ask questions. You don't do anything. You just this- chomp down. You go straight down on the floor. She probably finishes up with the guy <laughs> and then calls the paramedics. For the same reason you asked Melissa about her dad, it ain't going to happen with Drew's kids. 99 <laughs> out of 100. 16? Are you kidding He's me? He's an involved uh, dad. Uh, what do you happen. mean? Uh, involved dad? doesn't make the 16. Yes, it's, People uh, give oral sex. Not, I, you got your first BJ when you are uh, well in your 30s. It's I know strictly that. an anecdotal uh, no. example. doesn't matter what I did. The bottom line is, Melissa, you, at your age, you're having quite a bit of sexual experience. Uh, uh, experience. Yeah. Experimentation, it's not healthy. And it's like I've heard Adam say before, where are you going to go from there when you're 17, when you're 18? You start having sex too young, you set up a pattern of behavior that's not healthy, not good for well, you, it's, and it's, it destabilizes future it, relationships. It's too late. The whore's out of the barn. That's I mean, whore. I've done, though. I mean, I haven't yeah. had sexual intercourse yet. Yeah. No, but it's you, you sound like a reference manual for oral sex with uh, teenage Oh, guys. please. How dare you call her a whore? I didn't, <laughs> you called her a whore. I didn't call hey, her Melissa. Her. Yeah. What What are you gonna do? This, seriously, at seventeen, you're gonna talk about anal with your mom, or what? Do you, where do you go from here with the mom? I told my mom that when I am ready to have sex, that I will come to her about it. But you will. That, that's one thing I am gonna wait for. Okay. Yeah, but oral sex is sex. Nah, I mean, you know, it's wait. sex. Look, hey, Melissa, some <laughs> guys do this. That's it. I mean, you just ran into a guy who's uh, got a short fuse. Listen, Melissa, you can get gonorrhea, you can get all kinds of stuff having oral sex. So saying when you're ready to have sex, you've ever, I mean, you haven't had intercourse, but you've had sex. That's about, the way I look at it. But it's Melissa, if you're not planning on having sex with the guy and he has the orgasm in 30 seconds, isn't that good? I, I don't know. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not going anywhere, you just going to finish him off. True. Okay, so think of it that way. More, Let me tell you you're something. more efficient. Medically more efficient. speaking, there's no way to say that this is abnormal for the 17-year-old guy because there aren't normals and abnormals for, for this kind of sexual activity at that age. And the longer you can put off... What do you mean off, there's not normals and abnormals? Okay, if this is a 30-year-old guy coming to my practice saying that he uh, has premature ejaculation, that's one thing. But a 17-year-old guy getting oral sex from I a... See. Uh, you know, a sexually overly wise 16-year-old girl that's been around the block a few years. You stinking whore. Yeah. As, Bruce, Adam, you're, you're, uh, as most, Adam would say. Most girls at 16 have, have done this at, the, at this this day and age. Well, you know what? Most, I don't think it's most. No, I don't think most 16-year-olds have performed this. 
No, not from a moral yeah. standpoint. I, I would say, I would say, why, why don't you just go, why don't you move to like uh, Pennsylvania and raise your kids Amish? Philadelphia? Yeah, that's what you Philly? would do. You'd be hey. like an Amish guy. I'm from New York, man. Grow that I mean, I've, red beard. I went to high school no in New York mustache. City. I'm not that. Right, I'm not angry. Loosen up. Loosen up. It's loosen up. She should tighten up. I mean, she should. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> just pick a call. Would you stop casting? Uh, you don't want to breathe through the nose, then let's... No, no, t- let me talk to him real fast. All right. Jeff? Yeah? You got a problem with your nose? Yeah, I just want to say I'm a first-time caller, long-time listener. I've been listening for about four years you're, every night. You're wow. 14? Yeah. Oh, my God. 10 years old, you started listening to the show? Yep. You know, there's brain damage that you, from <laughs> listening to Adam when you're 10 years old. <laughs> I got dropped on my head too many times, but... Okay, well, that explains it. I got to say, I love the man show. Thank you. Wait a second. Thank the you. World. Thank Do your parents you. know you watch the Man Show? Um, well, I told them about it, but they won't ever watch it. Well, listen. Obviously, his parents uh, are uh, neglect poor right. Jeff. I mean, he's been listening to Love Line since he was ten. So and the Man give a rat's Show. Ass about you. I was going to ask if your dad likes the Juggies or not. Just shut up and answer his question okay. about his nose, please. What's the nose question? Okay, I've had a clogged nose for like about two years now. And mm-hmm. I don't know why, and I want to know what I can do about it. Respectfully asking you this question, you don't snort any drugs, no uh, coke? No, or I've spirit. never done a drug in my life. Okay. Yet. <laughs> Just right. breathe in and out, like very okay, do you have out breathing, like... <laughs> Which guest was that? That was Anthony Kiedis, everybody. Well, oh. hot chili peppers. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't remember. The best of all right, let's, shouldn't shouldn't he just go to uh, ear, nose, and throat? No, guy? just go to your <laughs> just yes. go to your family practitioner first. If if he has allergies, he may have a deviated septum, and uh, he may have with that beautiful Wisconsin air there. Maybe there's a little yeah. bit of uh, too much pollen or too much contamination in his air filter and his home heating system. But mm-hmm. yeah, a family practitioner can look up your nose with the uh, otoscope. Mm-hmm. And uh, okay. the ear. You done? Ear scope. Yep. All right, go to, go to your doctor. Yeah. All right, I think we're going to do a little uh, Ace Rock Cola when oh, we come back. No. Oh, yeah. Please. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah? All right, we'll take one more call. So we don't have to expose you to too much Ace Rock <sighs> Cola when we come back. Thank but God. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll be giving the weather report. And uh, <laughs> Ace will be giving a traffic report. We might even get a little surf report in. Absolutely. It's going to be very informative. Have a Doc Rock hole. Let me go get my cowbell here. Oh, God. All right, yeah, get ready, everybody. Tim? Yeah. You're 26. What's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Um, you guys are out of control. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, at least one of us is out of control. Okay, let me run this by you guys. All right. The last four serious relationships that I've had, the girls, after I've broken up with them, have gotten married to the next guy that they up with. You're right, right? No, you broke up with them? Um, I broke up with a couple of them. A couple of them broke up with me. All righty. And I just wanted to run that by you guys. Are they doing this out of spite? Or is it just my dumb luck? Because, like, these were girls that I actually considered marrying at the time. All right, but you broke up with half of them. Yeah. Are well, you, like, dysfunctional or what? Uh, I don't know. I, did you, were, I they really, were they really... Back and forth, emotionally, uh, uh, reaction. Actually, three out of four of them have been, like, emotionally pretty effed up, I guess. So, yeah. What, what do you do for a living, Tim? Um, I'm an electrician. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What kind of work do you do? Uh, just outside electrician. Do you do like residen- residential stuff? Residential, residential <laughs> and commercial. Was there a lot of turmoil in your family of origin? Not really. Uh-uh. Parents yeah. still married? What's that? Parents are still married. The stable yeah, relationship. No, actually, no. Both of them are divorced. Okay. So all right. I guess I'm yeah. a of divorce, all right. That's all right. At what age? What, what age? How old do you think they got divorced? Um, young, like five or six. Okay. All right. Well, not the world's healthiest thing, but look, here, here's the deal. You're 26. You don't need to get married now, anyway. Not number two. A lot of women, as they get into their mid 20s, are looking to get married, and so you know. It's probably not a coincidence. I mean, it's not you that has caused them to get married. It's their next serious relationship that comes around. I mean, I don't know what the average marrying age is, but I would guess it's mid-20s. And if he's dating women in their mid-20s, then 
Uh, I'm it not paying any attention right. to the fact that they've gotten married after they dated him. It's no. In fact, he's been in, in four tumult. It sounds like pretty, like he said, effed up relationships that were tumultuous. Right. Four in a row. Right. He's got a uh, divorce at age five, which tends to screw people up later on if they don't get some insight into it. And, you know, we haven't asked him about any other substance abuse issues. Or, But when people call here, they've got an inkling something's wrong generally. There's, it's not that they're, you know, uh, axe murderers, but they have issues from their family of origin. Divorce does tend to set in motion some unhealthy behaviors, mm-hmm. and that's probably what he needs to do is see somebody and sort through it. Yeah, yeah. I just saw boobs question here. Oh, well, my God. Uh, if that puts off Ace Rockola for 30 more yeah. seconds. Bouncy, bouncy. Yeah. Let me just General Warts, come on. No. Look, you may save a life. Listen, Vanessa? Yeah? Uh, you're 23? Yeah. You, uh, you were an A cop? Yeah. And now you got the implants to a D cup? Yes. And why'd you go D? Shouldn't you have gone C? Um, no. No? No. It isn't uh, going from an A cup to a D cup a little little too big a jump? Well, yeah. I just want to be sexy. Oh, yeah. What do you, what do, you do for a living? <laughs> I work at a daycare. You work at daycare? Work with kids? Yeah. Fantastic. Uh. Fantastic. And uh, you needed the D cup to work around the uh, prepudescent uh, toddlers, huh? Yay! <laughs> any any yeah. uh, family of origin abuse issues? Any kind of uh, problems in your distant past? Um, no. No. Uh, little girl voice. You know. I do you have? I don't, I don't get it. Did we never never sexually I did abused. That a lot. Were you sexually abused? No. Never molested. No. When did you lose your virginity? Uh, was 18 and a half, actually. All right. Mm. That's an old maid. The thing that did bother me is that my sister was always bigger than me, and she was younger. She had a bigger chest. Yeah. All right, listen, I can understand this. If I was walking around with a smaller penis, <laughs> uh, and someone gave me a choice of, oh, listen, you want, you want eight, or do you want the, uh, you know, black rhino, <laughs> I, I, I'd step it up. But I'd say, as long as we're doing it, let's go. Let's yeah. do it right. Yeah. Wouldn't you? I mean, I, you walk I, I would com- do it. How would you know? You don't go around comparing it to I, I would I would know huh. I would do it from all the pornos you're seeing. I'm just saying I would do it I I don't blame you for going with D but now you got stretch marks right Yeah that now it's like I kind of regret going D because it's like a little too big Okay so what can she do for these stretch marks That's it, what I want It's know. pretty much just laser right There's no cream or anything No right? they generally don't work Laser doesn't work for everybody but it's it seems to be uh, helpful who, So what consult the plastic surgeon You could see a plastic surgeon or somebody that does laser medicine Okay. And plastic they, surgeon would be a great creams aren't do, although no. I, I've said this a thousand times ladies you never listen to me stretch mark not a big deal not no, a big oh, but deal you know what don't even go down that road because as a dude you not a big to, deal but you have to ask the woman how do you feel about it and that they now, will listen even women, if they're minuscule they're almost impossible to say. W- women but, worry about what guys think everything they do is based on what guys think it's based on their bo- their body image yeah and which is based on what we think no, is good not, looking. i got news for you no what we think is good looking is what decides no. their body image what cosmo says is good looking listen, and that's the problem today is too many women are influenced by what they perceive to be Required listen, men, to be men, ultra skinny. Men rec- to have- listen, women would gladly do away with what they thought of themselves if they thought this is what guys are into. Women would gladly do away with what they... They should really think a lot longer before they have augmentation surgery or plastic surgery. Oh, okay. And the concern is that they feel like they're not adequate and they need larger breasts. They're not adequate and they okay. need to have... Don't worry session. about the stretch marks, lady. Right. Hey, listen, if you got a bunch of stuff, you know, because you gave birth to a 16-pound kid and you had triplets and a big litter of kids, you got a bunch of weird stuff around your belly, it's hanging over over your bikini bottoms, that's one thing. But if you got a little on the ass or the thigh or a little around the breast, no problem there. I got no problem with that. That's fine. But also you have to wait months, a year yeah. after pregnancy, and right. a lot of those things go decrease. Bruce, we got, we got to start preparing for the big lightning round here. How, Ace Rock what do you suggest up. I do? Maybe go out in the Just, car and uh, play go, my radio. Go and take a up. leak or something. I'll let you work the cowbell. Oh, really? Can yeah. I wear it? Can I yeah, put it around your neck there? so we know Great. where not to find you. We'll be back. You know what I'm saying out there? Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back on Loveline. Loveline, 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 Loveline. on 94.7 NRK. Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla, 94.7 NRK. (laughs) 
Let's check the time real fast. 11.51 and 30 seconds. That's eight minutes and 30 seconds away from the top of the hour. You smack the in the middle of the line around Fast Time Central Radio. All right, for me to move on, let's check the time and weather real fast. La Harbor coming in 41. Point eight, La Point eight, 40. North Hollywood, 39. Pomona, 37. Lock and Yana, Flint Ridge area coming in 35. Encino, 44. New Hall, Saugus, 51. Wine Garden, 42 degrees. Pan- Panorama, 46 degrees. Van Nuys, 41. Van 39. In Southgate, 46 degrees. Uh, let's check the time real fast. Time, 11. Fi- no, 11.52. Exactly. Eight minutes away from the top of the hour. What do you got? No, there's Zach and Bruce over there. For time. Let's check the oh, let's check the weather. No, the traffic coming in. Slow and go on the 101. Look out for brake lights on the 110. Debris on the floor level. Look out for that jackass. Dropped a mattress out there. Uh, another mattress out. A box spring on the uh, number three lane of the 405. And uh, jackknife big rig on the 118. Look General Warts on line six. And look at this. This just it. Look out for a pickup truck in the number four lane on the 10. Dr. Bruce in there getting covered with hepatitis. And Let's hop out of the lab and say, I'm going to check it real fast at 4 o'clock time. The callers are the show. Let's check the time. Chris? Yeah. Chris, he's the time to say, he's your own smack down. He's rock all. What's going on? Okay. Um, yeah, you got something? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got yeah. a little situation. <laughs> yeah, we heard that today. Yeah, that's right. But hey, buddy. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Hey, on one second. First off, the callers are the show. These cars are the show. You guys have shows. It's not my show. It's your show. You understand? Okay. It's, it's not your show. No, it's my show. No, it's not your show. Let's check the time real fast. 11.53 and 15 seconds. That is six minutes and 45 <laughs> seconds away from the top of the hour straight up. You smack the ham in the middle of the fast as they know it's real. I mean, it's not close to get all that time. They're proof. Building nice right La Harbor. Check it in at 40 degrees north Hollywood, 39. Yeah, Chris, what's up there, buddy? Okay, so... Slow, um, slow and go on the 101, by the way. Chris has two chicks at once. Yeah, look out for brake lights on the 110. What's that there, Chris? I'm 16. 16 years old. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Speaking I'm of 16, let's check the time. 11.53 and 45 seconds, everybody. Six minutes and 15 seconds away from the top of the hour. Show. I'm Ace Rock. All is going to find it. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. Chris? Dude! Yeah. 16 years old. Two chicks. Two chicks. What's on it? Two chicks. 16 years old. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm juggling two chicks. I live in Ventura. Yeah. I got one Twinkie hole, yeah. baby. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you somebody. I had a threesome when I was 16. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not a threesome, dude. No, but let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. <laughs> It's Ace Rock Cole here, but I had a threesome. I beat awful two of my friends' watch. <laughs> okay. All right, no, seriously, Chris. Shows. It's your show. The show's about you. Okay. All right. Your, your listeners are the show. The people that call in, that's the show. Okay. That's the show. It's not me. It's not Bruce. What's your it's question for Ace Rock Hall? There's a short uh, attention span. New Hall okay, Saugus um, coming in 51. Hawaiian okay. Gardens 42. Panorama so, uh, 46. Uh, I got a, nice second in 41. Pasadena. <laughs> Chile 39. I got South a chick 46, in town, yeah. and I also got a chick like out in Chatsworth. Yeah, the two chicks. Yeah. About Chatsworth. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Chatsworth coming in at uh, 41 degrees, by the way. Do you have yeah. a traffic or weather mm-hmm. question uh-huh. for us? Uh, neither. Okay. Um, yeah, two chicks at once. Yeah, look okay. out for brake lights on the okay, one. Okay, so we'll be right there. So the chicken no. town is like. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, well, that about does it. And I want to thank you all for calling in because I have to tell you something about the show. This show is not about me. It's about you. You are the show. The callers are the show. That's right. We'll you right understand? There. You're the most interesting guest we ever had on the show. You, the callers. Mm-hmm. And we thank you Board for calling certified. in. And without you, the show would happen every day. I'll check the town. We'll check the weather. We'll check the surf. We'll check the traffic. <laughs> and we'll have a fishing report, too, when we come back. All right, guys. Bottom line, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? One call is all you need to make. Call the Dateline. The Dateline. 877-889-DATE. Loveline with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Loveline on 94.7 NRK is brought to you by Car Toys. All right. 
right. Well, there you go. Another uh, fabulous Love Line show safely in the can. Yeah, I risk brain damage. Two hours of curl. Oh, you wouldn't uh, trade it uh, for the world. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Bruce for coming in here and uh, doing a fine job filling in for uh, Dr. Drew. And uh, man, we don't need that Drew back. Oh. I, I hope he gets detained in Cuba. Uh, unacceptable. Unacceptable. All right, tomorrow night we're going to have a gynecologist in here, and I got a thousand million questions for Unacceptable. Him. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, again, thanks to uh, Dr. Bruce for doing a great job. Quite welcome. Don't talk anymore. You did a great job. Let's not spoil it. You know I what I'm saying? You could you. screw up. How <laughs> dare you. So until next time, it's Adam Crowley for Dr. Bruce. Say mahalo. Oh. <laughs> Listen, if I was stripping at 17, I'd still be stripping. You would have been I, at the it, circus stripping. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.